This is what they found out. We have also learned of a phone call that was intercepted nearby. This is going to be it. Smoking gun. Man says in Russian, is it supposed to have blinking green lights? And should I leave it on all night? We have no idea what he was talking about. <laughs> Could be his dishwasher. Could be anything. But clearly that must mean that the Russians hit this woman with the dizzy gun. It Let's get to this amazing 60 Minutes piece. I can't even put words to how beautifully insane this 60 Minutes piece is. Havana Syndrome, as some of you may recall, it got that name because U.S. diplomats in Cuba were saying, not a lot of them, we're talking a handful or something, said that something had happened to them where they heard ringing in their ears and they fell over. And if you read the articles from back, it started five years ago, or whatever, and, and it wasn't regular. So it wasn't like every day I wake up and boom. It was like, Something happened to them once or something. If you read the articles about it from back then, first of all, they do a lot of blaming it on Cuba. Cuba must have hit them with a sound cannon. Cuba clearly got them. And it was so insane on so many levels. It ticks along and they 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 used it. They used it to increase uh, sanctions on Cuba, to increase the embargo on Cuba, which, by the way, 98% of every country in the UN voting against the embargo on Cuba. It's just the US, I think, and maybe Israel that vote to continue because Cuba's done, done nothing to no one one except send doctors around the world. But apparently they say, oh, Cuba must have this super futuristic uh, sound cannon that no one can hear, but it causes you to get dizzy and, and tired. And at the time I made fun of it for many reasons, but one of them being uh, I've been to Cuba. They still have cars from the 1950s. In fact, that's why a lot of people visit Cuba is to see the cars from the 1950s that look amazing, by the way, that are amazing. <laughs> like, you're telling me the country where they're still driving the 1950s cars because they can't import cars because of the embargo. Uh, you tell me that country has a space age, like, above all science the U.S. military has ever come up with. Uh, ray gun that we can't even imagine how it works. Did they, yeah, did they use the 1953 Chevy to, to make that? So 60 Minutes, been covering this for like five years, and here they go again. And the first 12 seconds is some of the best part of the whole thing. One of them is Carrie. We're disguising her and not using her last name because she's still an FBI. So right now, he says she's still an FBI agent. Right now you're thinking, oh, they're disguising her. So we're never going to see her face, right? It's going to be backlit like this one. She's got a wig on. Agent working in counterintelligence. There she is. <laughs> Could ever find out who this woman is. I... I guarantee you that the moment she got the moment this thing aired on television, I guarantee you, C Carrie, which is not a real name, I guarantee you, Lou Ann got calls from 37 high school friends who said, I saw you in 60 minutes last night. Lou Ann, I knew it was you. There is no way this woman didn't walk out the following morning to the grocery store and have everyone go, oh, it's the FBI agent from uh, 60 Minutes. BuzzFeed wrote a whole article. People are laughing at this FBI agent's disguise for 60 minutes. And then they show what other disguises on television look like. You've got the blackout. You've got the blurred face. This guy even wore a blanket over his head. You got the side view. You got all those things. 60 minutes, just a Lady Gaga wig is all they got. And maybe... Did, maybe they put uh, fake eyelashes on her. Do you think that's what did it? And I have it on a bit of fast speed because I do want to show you so much of it. But when she was hit by a crippling force. But let's also point out that he just said that she's still an active FBI agent. Does that ring any bells for anyone? You're trusting an active FBI agent to tell you the truth about anything? Active FBI, active CIA, active NSA. This lunatic, I forget his name, the guy that hosts 60 Minutes, stares at a unhinged woman in a Lady Gaga wig saying she got hit with a ray gun and she's active FBI and he makes that face going, oh, fascinating, I can't believe they got you. And bam, inside my right ear, it was like a dentist drilling on steroids. That feeling uh, when it, that it gets too close to your eardrum. Yeah, here's another thing is... Maybe something really did happen to her. All I'm saying, not a ray gun, not a Russian ray gun. All right. Whatever happened in your little loony wig wearing head, uh, not a ray gun. It's like that, you know, times 10. It was like a high pitched metallic drilling noise and it knocked me forward at like a 45 degree angle this way. She says she was. It's, I don't know about you, but I'm sold. I'm, she described the angle. She was knocked forward. 
How could this not be true? Could you imagine if 60 Minutes did this segment with any other type of story? Like, this guy saw aliens, and he's, he wants to disguise his identity, so he's wearing a Sonny Bono wig, and he's, and they, he's just sitting there going, yeah, they got me. It caused me to bend over a little, and then uh, something did a ringy-dingy. No one would take any of that seriously. Why are people taking this seriously? It's by a window in her laundry room. My right ear was line of sight to that window while this thing was happening in my ear. And when I leaned forward, it kind of knocked, it didn't knock me over, but it knocked me forward. At the same time, FBI agent Kerry told us the battery in her phone began to swell until it broke the case. Because of chest pain, she was checked by a cardiologist and then returned to duty. And I remember complaining to my colleagues uh, for months after that, my baseline changed. I was not the same person. So she says like, oh, it, it harmed me. It made me, it made it, you know, difficult to do work. And I was just not the same person. So we're expected to believe. And by the way, as we go on, they'll, they'll say it's clearly Russia doing this. Uh, so we're expected to believe that Russia has this super, super high tech, like technology beyond anything U.S. military has ever come up with. And they're using it just on this little unhinged lady at the FBI. Like, that's the only, like, they go after no, no higher level officials. Nobody you've ever heard their name. Nobody like you'd recognize. You go, oh, wow, they hit Tony Blinken, huh? Nope, never. They're just hitting Carrie from accounting. That is it. Carrie's story matches those we've uncovered over the years. It was like the. So he says, here's them, here's uh, 60 Minutes just straight up lying. He says it matches those. But in fact, if you read the earlier accounts in these articles from five, four years ago, many of them say, seem very different. One says he uh, felt dizziness and uh, couldn't sleep for a week. Another said it made them lazy. Another said it gave them a splitting headache. Another said that they uh, were, were fine in a week. And then the others said they were not fine for months and months. Uh, some say they vomited. It's actually very different symptoms on many of them. I'm not saying some of them don't overlap. Obviously, I think the ringing tends to be maybe mentioned by all of them. But he says, oh, it's all the same. No, it's not all the same. It's actually, there's a lot of differences. This piercing feeling on the side of my head. It was like, I remember it was on the right side of my head and I, I got like vertigo. Olivia Troy was Homeland. Then they try and point out that she was doing something important, right? She was sitting next to Mike Pence. So they go, oh, she was Homeland Security. Shows her near Mike Pence. First of all, Mike Pence isn't even important in the U.S. government scheme. Do you think Russia gave a flying turd about Mike Pence when he was in office? So not even he is important. This lady, you've never heard her name. Not a higher position, higher level position. And yet Russia was out to get her. They were out to Ray Gunner. Let's get that lady sitting next to Mike Pence. Because what has happened is she'll get a little dizzy. And then Mike Pence will go, oh, my God, the Russian made her dizzy. And then he'll get scared and he'll hide. And what that'll do is that'll make it so we can defeat Ukraine. Because Mike Pence will be hiding. And security advisor to Vice President Mike Pence. In our 2022 report, she told us she was hit outside the White House. And then severe ear pain started. So I, I liken it to if you put a Q-tip. So you have, so far you have FBI and Homeland Security. How much do you trust those people to be telling you the truth right now about anything? About anything. Their whole job is to lie to you and the world. That is their goddamn job. Get too far and you bounce off your eardrum. Well, imagine taking a sharp pencil and just kind of poke in that. And this there man we. told us he was among the first they have a, they have a uh, uh, ray gun pencil, sharp pencil machine. Russia fired sharp pencils at my ears. Publicly known cases in 2016 from our embassy in Cuba. That's how the incidents became known as Havana syndrome. He mentions how they became known as Havana syndrome. That is the only mention just about of Cuba. I think maybe 60 Minutes and all of our mainstream media owes a massive apology to Cuba. Through this entire extensive report, they never say Cuba had anything to do with it. They've, they're pinning it on the Russians. It, Cuba's out, out, of the, out of the consideration for the, 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 the perpetrators of this ray gun attack. You owe an apology to the American people because you lied to them saying Cuba did it. You owe an apology to Cuba. You owe taking decreasing the embargo, which in, was increased based on these lies. And perhaps let's throw in an apology to me and everybody who was all of us independent media who was saying it was bullshit from the day one. He's medically retired from an agency we can't name. Agency we can't name. Does anybody want to guess which one that is? Does anyone want to guess which agency cannot be named? CIA. It always means CIA. So when you say you can't name an agency, what, what do you think? It's agriculture. 
maybe it's maybe it's transportation. Is that he's probably retired from the transportation uh, department, and that's probably why they can't name it because he worked a lot on charter schools, and he just doesn't want to be associated with that anymore. So let's rehash FBI, NS, uh, sorry, Homeland Security, and CIA. Pretty good, pretty good list. Don't you think? But what they don't mention here when they're talking to this doctor is that a report just came out a couple of days ago from the National Institute of Health that says there's no evidence of MRI detectable brain injury or biological abnormalities. Using advanced imaging techniques and in-depth clinical assessments, a research team at the NIH found no significant evidence of MRI detectable brain injury nor differences in more clinical measures compared to controls among a group of federal employees who experienced anomalous health incidents, which is what they're now calling Havana syndrome, since it has nothing to do with Cuba. These incidents, including hearing noise and experiencing head pressure, followed by headache, dizziness, cognitive dysfunction, and other symptoms, have been described in the news media as Havana syndrome. So the NIH found no injuries. And here is, they, they found, the, the, the 60 Minutes found a quack to say, oh no, there's injuries. You would think when 60 Minutes shows a doctor saying there were injuries, you think they'd also mention the NIH study saying there were no injuries. And CBS does, 60 Minutes does mention that later in the broadcast, but they don't want to put it next to the doctor saying the opposite thing because then that would make him look wrong. So they then go on this, they talk about this Russian who was in a high-speed police chase in the United States. They say they finally caught him after a high-speed police chase and look at what happened. And this device that looks like a walkie-talkie can erase the car's computer data, including its GPS record. There was also a Russian passport. A Russian was allowed in the United States. Breaking news. Uh, no, clearly, I'm assuming this guy was up to some shit. Like, if, if if this is true, if this isn't just all garbage, but if this is true, I assume this guy was up to some shit. But man, you that's a big leap to say Russian guy doing something bad, nefarious, uh, deleting his info off his car. Russian guy doing something bad equals shooting mysterious high-tech ray gun at low-level government officials. <laughs> like... That's a hell of a leap. What's your first name? Vitaly. B-I-T-A-L-I-I. Vitaly Kovalev was the driver from St. Petersburg, Russia, not Florida. Why did you run? Let me be honest I don't, with you. I don't know. You don't know why you ran? I don't know. And we don't know why he ran. But what we learned suggests he was a Russian spy. So here's the thing. Maybe he even was a Russian spy. Still does not mean he gave headaches to Karen in accounting. What we see here is Vitaly Kovalev fitting exactly this formula. Christo Grosev is a journalist. We asked him to trace Vitaly Kovalev. He studied in the military institute. He studied radio electronics with a particular focus on use within the military of, uh, of microelectronics. He had all the technology know-how that would be required for somebody to be assisting an operation that requires high technology. And then all of a sudden, after working for two years in a military institute, he up and decides to become a chef. Kovalev immigrated to the U.S. and worked as a chef in New York and Washington, D.C., even appearing at far left in a TV cooking set. Man, Russian spies are terrible at keeping secrets, keeping their identity under wraps, aren't they? He went on national television on a cooking show. Yeah, would think if you were here as a Russian spy, maybe don't go on a national cooking show. But Kovalev was actually a Russian military electrical engineer with a top secret security clearance. I mean, for one thing, we've got to believe them that any of this is true, that he is a Russian spy, that he's connected to Russian intelligence. I'm I'm believing them on that just because everything else is so stupid that it's like, even if you believe them that this guy's a Russian spy and all that stuff they found in his bag and they're all... Even if you believe him on all that, it's still... This whole thing is still hysterical. Leave that behind once you're in the military. Ovalev was up to... But our sources say over months, he spent 80 hours being interviewed by FBI agent Kerry, who had investigated multiple Russian spies. You'll see he pleads guilty to running. Evading from police and reckless driving. Evading police and, and running from the uh, running from the cops and reckless driving. So meaning they never found anything else on him, right? Or they would have prosecuted him for that. He spends 80 hours over months talking to this, this FBI woman in the wig, the Lady Gaga, and she apparently never finds anything on him. That's useful enough to arrest him for more than what well, I think he gets locked up for 30 months or something. So a few years. And so 
you got to assume that if she did all that interviewing and didn't find that he had actually did anything to do with a super Russian ray gun plan. But let's also point out here that, okay, if you were to believe their stance on this, this guy zapped Lady Gaga because she was interrogating him. So he hates her, right? Because he's a Russian spy, doesn't like that she's interrogating him. She's with the FBI. So he hates her. So he somehow gets someone who's not in prison. To go and zap her with a ray gun. And what's the what's the aim? What does it achieve? Does it stop her from her job? Does it stop her from investigating him? Apparently not. She completed her investigation. So you go through all this just to give them, even if they're bad headaches. Like, let's say they're really, really bad headaches. By the way, no one said migraines. So I guess they're not that bad. You know, she said she does sometimes walk into a door because it makes her dizzy. He's got to go through all this effort this this FBI agent he hates so much and he he makes her occasionally bump into a door. Ah, got her. Did it. If I could make the FBI agent dizzy and bump into a door, then everything would be coming up roses for Mr. KGB here. Mr. Cook and Show KGB. Oh my God, it's so stupid. It's so stupid. It's so stupid. And a year later, when she awoke to the same symptoms in the middle of the night in California. It felt like I was stuck in this state of like disorientation, not able to function. Like what is happening? And my whole body was pulsing. And she was late to work that day. <laughs> he got her again. Mark Zaid is Carrie's attorney. He has a security clearance and for decades has represented Americans working in national security. Now they add in the attorney for these people, for many Havana syndrome, soft, quote unquote, sufferers. Boy, that guy doesn't have a financial uh, dog in the race, does he? He gets paid as they get paid for having something happen to them as they were U.S. officials. Huge financial incentive for this to continue on, for the lawsuits to continue on, for the, the interviews to continue on, for this to be a real thing. So you have that guy, then you have FBI currently serving, then you have ex-CIA, and then you have uh, ex-NSA. Uh, Lee Kovalev served his time and in 2022 went back to Russia, ignoring American warnings that he was in danger because he'd spent so much time with the FBI. Christo Grozev found this death certificate. So basically we got him killed is what they're saying. From last year, which says Kovalev was killed at the front in Ukraine. Yes, it very well could be that he was uh, executed for possibly being connected to the FBI. Uh, it could also be that he was military. They already said that, right? He's, he's Russian military. He went back to Russia during the war with Ukraine. Russia needs troops in Ukraine. Russia could have very well just sent him as part of their military back to being part of their military. We're dealing with energy weapons. It's not going anywhere. Look how effective it's been. What, it made you wear a wig? That's, we did it. Yeah. We made 12 low level people dizzy for an hour. It's generational weaponry. And unfortunately it's been refined on some of us and we're the test subjects. So the test subjects. So here's the thing. If you were to have test subjects, wouldn't you test it on like auto mechanics in Russia? <laughs> Like, wouldn't you, if you were Russia and you had this super secret weapon, wouldn't you just test it on someone that wouldn't out you as having a super secret weapon and committing crimes against Americans that could cause a nuclear war and could cause uh, the end of all humanity? Wouldn't that make more sense to just test it on, like, your mailman? It, I'm just saying, the idea that they had to test it on the, these, like, Lola, the woman that once sat next to Mike Pence, it's like, yeah, yeah we, we 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 couldn't possibly test it on that guy walking down the street over there where no one would ever know and ever say anything. We have to test it on just a couple of diplomats and their families. Uh, by the way, the the Pentagon and the CIA have come out and said it's not real. Uh, no, not not after this report, but I'm I mean, uh, in the past, U.S. intelligence says publicly there is no credible evidence that an adversary is inflicting brain injuries on national security. There you go. Do you think that might be the lead, right? No. I also am not saying that there couldn't be impacts on people's thought uh, or people's uh, giving them dizzy and ringing and stuff from other things that are in our in our world. I don't know, 5G, which is not very tested, or uh, there's a million things nowadays in our world that could cause people to have impacts like this. Uh, and it would make far more sense that it's something like that 
than a secret ray gun that Russia's only aiming at lower level people. The Pentagon launched an investigation run by a recently retired Army Lieutenant Colonel. Greg Edgreen has never spoken publicly until now. That guy has never spoken in public. That's amazing. This poor guy. He's just huddled in his house. He's, uh, he's, he's never spoken publicly. Sorry. I know. I know that's a cheap shot, but I, I couldn't help but laugh very hard when they were like, this guy from the Pentagon has never spoken in public. Are we being attacked? My personal opinion, yes. By whom? Russia. So now we have FBI, CIA, and Pentagon all telling you, yeah, that Russia, Russia got me. Greg Ed Green ran the investigation for the Defense Intelligence Agency. He would not discuss classified information, but he described his team's work from 2021 to 2023. You're going to love this, and I'm going to tell you this up top rather than wait till 60 Minutes subtly reveals it at the end of their entire broadcast. This guy right here they're talking to is now retired, and his entire income is an organization to get government contracts to help investigate and deal with Havana syndrome. Meaning this guy's entire life is financially based on Havana syndrome being real and prevalent and important. And the government is going to give him lots of money in the private sector to deal with that. So you'd think that might be something you tell people up top. Hey, this next guy has a huge financial incentive to tell you everything uh, about Havana syndrome is real and it's coming from an adversary and they're going to keep getting us. Unfortunately, I can't get into specifics based on the classification, but I can tell you at a very early stage, I started to focus on Moscow. Gotcha. So Pentagon guy who wants government contracts says Moscow did it. If this were true, let's let's for a moment entertain the idea that this is true, right? Moscow, secret ray gun. Uh, they've decided to give dizziness and headaches to a couple of uh, diplomats. And let's assume that all the joking that I've been making about how it's not really stopping them from working almost exclusively, even the main woman, Lady Gaga here, is still working at the FBI. All of that aside, let's say this was working great. Do you think in a million years, the United States, and I mean both at the agency tops, but also lower level, like this guy, like Mrs. FBI, Mrs. Mr. CIA, do you think they'd admit to the world that that is happening? Hey, Russia, you know the super secret ray gun that you've been hitting us with. It is destroying us. It is having so much impact. We don't know our ass from our elbow. Oh, my God. You really got us on this one. We have no idea where it's coming from, how you're doing it, but you have just totally fucked up everything for us. Do you think they'd say that? They would never. They would, they would try, if this were real, they would try and pretend it was nothing so that they could try and find a way to fight it and, and try and get Russia to stop because Russia thought they weren't achieving anything. The idea they'd ever allow, especially an active employee like F Mrs. FBI, Mr. Lady Gaga, uh, but also retired Mr. CIA, uh, this guy, do you think they'd let them go on national television and say, you got us, Russia. Oh, I oughta. You really have, you know, you, that thing you've been considering doing to actual top officials, to hitting like the president and, and the secretary of state and that thing you're thinking of doing, totally would work. Totally would just would decapitate the whole U.S. government. So we hope you don't do that. Never. There's only two possibilities for what the hell this thing is. One is these people are suffering from something, but... It's nothing to do with Russia. It's just who knows what the connection is. It's like I said, it could be some environmental things. Uh, they call them anomalous health impacts. Who knows? Possibility two is they're all making it all up because it's useful, right? To have a cold war against Russia, you need to say Russia's doing something to us. Russia's hitting us in various ways. If Russia's never hitting us, then it's a lot tougher to, to, to justify to the American people why you should be afraid, you should trust Papa, Papa's going to keep you safe, and you need to let us commit wars and proxy wars against Russia. You can't justify all that unless Russia's somehow getting us. Can you tell me about the patterns you began to see? One of the things I started to notice was the caliber of our officer that was being impacted. 
this wasn't happening to our worst or our middle range officers. Mm. This was happening to our top five, 10% performing officers across the defense intelligence. None of which have ever been in a position of power like that you and I have ever heard of. None of what nobody in Congress, no, you can say representative so and so, nobody. In, and by the way, how would the Russians know who the best, the top people are at military intelligence in the Pentagon? That's one hell of a surveillance system they got going. If they're like this guy, he always shows up early to work. He always show up early to work. We this this guy worked very hard, very hard. We need to give him headache. We need to make him dizzy. This guy, this guy would never take full lunch break. We need him to bump into his kitchen counter. That is the only answer. But we have learned it started two years earlier when at least four Americans reported symptoms in Frankfurt, Germany. Okay, so he says it's called Havana Syndrome because it was first reported in Cuba, but we found out it actually happened before that in Germany. Well, boy, yet again, you owe an apology to Cuba. You all, you, you, you should end the embargo on Cuba. You should owe an apology to all the independent journalists who said it had nothing to do with Cuba. Uh, but you, you owe an apology to the world for all your garbage reporting about Cuba. Do you believe that you were attacked? Absolutely. She asked us to withhold her name for her safety. Uh, yet another woman they have carefully disguised. Uh, they gave her a little extra rouge, a little extra right there, right there. So they did like that. Like he said, they're not giving her name. And a little extra rouge and, rouge, and you would never recognize this person on the street. You have no idea who this is. It, it, there's no way to ever find out who this who this woman is. We don't have her name. And uh, too much rouge on the old cheekbones. It's the embassy in Tbilisi. She's a nurse with a PhD in anesthesiology. On October 7th, 2021, she says that she was in her laundry room. So she's a nurse and the Russians wanted to zap her with the headache gun. Right. When she was blindsided by a sound. As I'm reaching into the dryer, um, I am. You notice all of the, <laughs> you know, they were asking about patterns. All these people seem to be by like heavy machinery when it had like she's reaching into a dry dryer. Uh, the other woman was uh, in her kitchen around dishwashers and they they all seem to be pretty close to some big machines. Wonder if that's any connection. OK, so they're saying this happened in, I think, Georgia. The country. This is what they found out. And child were hit. We have also learned of a phone call that was intercepted nearby. Phone call intercepted nearby. This is going to be it, but folks. This is the smoking gun, right? This is going to be the Russians saying, did you zap her with the dizzy gun? Okay, ready? Ready? Smoking gun. Man says in Russian, is it supposed to have blinking green lights? And should I leave it on all night? We have no idea what he was talking about. <laughs> That blinking green light, should I leave it on all night? It, it, that could be an uh, electric dildo. <laughs> could be could be a dishwasher. Could be anything. But clearly that must mean that the Russians hit this woman with the dizzy gun. It had to be. How could it not be? Even if you were to say that, oh, no, this, this is clearly not a dishwasher. What Like, you're telling me. These super secret Russian agents with their super secret technology that's so advanced that the United States can't even fathom what it is. We can't even can't, we can't even come up with an idea of what it is. They have their ray gun, which apparently needs to be brought in, in person. I thought these were being shot from satellites, but no, apparently you've got to like walk up to the outside of their house and uh, start cranking it, your dizzy gun. So, uh, so these super secret uh, agents, Russian agents, take their super secret uh, tinnitus machine outside this woman's house and then don't know how it works. They, they just push the button. He's like, uh, we're supposed to have green lights. It's, 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 it's blinking green. Is green good or bad? Is green good? Uh, there's a button that says vibrate. Do I push that one or no? No, okay. I've never done this before. Yeah, well, you sent me here in a super secret mission to atta attack U.S. diplomats and their families, and uh, I didn't bother to actually study anything that we're doing. In fact, what what is it exactly I'm holding right now? Am I supposed to stab this into them? Does this does this need to insert rectally, or how does that work? Because I'm outside her apartment. I think I'm gonna have to get inside to do that. Oh, you're saying stay outside? Okay, okay. So not rectally. 
Okay, I didn't study anything. I didn't. You guys just told me to grab a sandwich and we're heading out. I know nothing. <laughs> it's supposed to have blinking lights. That's right. They they legitimately sent the guy that like, you know, runs the snack shop in the Kremlin. You take it there. We're not sending any real guys that know how the machine works. <laughs> just have, have, a, have a Vlad over there who uh, who pumps out the nacho cheese. Just have him take it. He can do it. He can do it. He can do it. They uh they then connected to this guy who is a, a I don't know a Russian Russian spy guy, but he's also the son of a Russian diplomat. And then they show the picture of him uh and the woman uh, the who's disguised with rouge. Uh, she says, "Oh yeah, I think I saw him." She says, "I can't say for certain, but I think it's him. I think he was standing outside my my house." So the Russians send the son of a high level Russian guy to go stand outside the home of a U.S. diplomat and shoot them with the dizzy gun because that's not suspicious or could be caught, could be seen at all? No, that's just do it. Just send them. So they finally, they wait, they go through this entire thing and then they admit this. This month, the National Institutes of Health reported results of brain scans. NIH said there's no evidence of physical damage. So no evidence. Of physical damage. And they've saved that all the way till the end of this thing. They then go back and talk again with people with huge financial incentives for this to be a real thing. The lawyer who's getting paid to, to defend these people and the guy who's created an entire, I love this, an entire organization. Specified investigation. Greg Ed Green retired from the army to start a company to help the victims. He hopes to channel government contracts into treatment programs. Looking for government money, millions of dollars, to go to him to deal with Havana Syndrome. Boy, he's not, uh, there's, there's no, no uh, bias there, is there? Well done. Well done, 60 Minutes.